You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program we break down what the heck is going on on the newest edition here to the network and indeed to the world of derivatives. It is, of course, the crypto side of space. We're going to talk some Bitcoin, We're going to get into the altcoins, We're going to get into your ETHs and XRP and all that fun stuff, as well as a bunch of your questions and all the volume, the open interest, the unusual activity, the skew, all that good stuff. My name is Mark Longo from the Options Insider dot com as well as of course from this fine network upon which you are listening to this i should say right now and if you like what you're hearing if you like this show it sounds like a lot of you are enjoying this program these days make sure if you haven't done so already hey first off head on back to the mothership wherever you get in this program could be itunes could be our website could be our app however you get it spotify and make sure if you haven't done so already subscribe to the full network so you get all of our shows not just crypto rundown there's a lot of programming there you're missing out if you just listen to this show and b if you like what you hear make sure you go to your platform of choice Leave a review. Help the new folks discover this program. Always like to see the new earlobes coming on in on the old crypto rundown. Of course, keep those questions, those comments coming. We do love to hear from you guys. And without further ado, let's dive right on into it. A little bit of your Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trading activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the The Bitcoin Bitcoin Breakdown. Breakdown. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the program where we break down what's been going on out there in the world's most active, most popular digital asset. Of course, I'm talking Bitcoin. And straight on up, coming into showtime, Bitcoin's been moving on up all the way up quite a bit, over 700, nearly 800 handles uh, since this time last show, last Monday, listeners. Uh, Coming into showtime, we saw Bitcoin up about 780 handles from where it was last show, it was right around 6,900 when we closed out last week's show. And coming into this show, it was closing in on 7,700 out there. And actually, yeah, a little bit north of 7,700, right now 7,714. So it has ticked up even since we started looking at it here at the beginning of the show. So getting a little bit of that upside movement coming, of course, as that having continues to approach the big day everyone's been talking about and waiting for. You know, we saw what happened with Litecoin most recently when it went through its halving cycle, having, of course, reducing the rewards for folks out there who are mining it out there. So, of course, maybe making things a little bit tighter, maybe driving up the price out there. And that, at least over the course of this past week, seems to have been playing out. If you are curious, 14 days, 16 hours, and 23 minutes. Oh, and 25 seconds. Just tick-tied there over there. I love Coindesk has the big countdown to the halving. It just... 
it just cracks me up every time you look at it. But 14 days and change away from the big having event. It's the event everyone's been talking about and watching them for. They thought this would be the bullish tale that would lead to a big run-up leading into this event. Of course, other forces have intervened over the course of the past few months. Of course, we saw the big market meltdown in February into March, and that pulled Bitcoin and pretty much all the crypto right along with it. As you said before, correlation goes to one when things hit the fan, and everyone was looking for a way to get into cash, and they're liquidating everything they had, including Bitcoin and the altcoin out there. So we saw that perhaps derailing some of the having talk for a while, but now the market's back in rally mode, and it seems like Bitcoin, at least for the time being, is in rally mode as well. You know we like to hang our hat there. We like to hang our hat on the options and the futures and the derivative side of the coin. So without further ado, let's get into that with all that fun stuff. A lot of these metrics coming to you courtesy of our friends over there in Skewland, S-K-E-W.com. Check them out before they come to their senses and stop making it free for you guys. <laughs> Go check it out. If you're playing in the world of Bitcoin, the options or the futures, it's just a spot. You probably should learn a little bit about what's going on out there from a vol perspective. Let's do that right now. The realized vol, which is, of course, the actual volatility that the market has exhibited over the past 30 days, is down a wee bit. It's down about 20 points. It was 93% on our last show. It's at 71% coming into today's show. Again, that's just reflecting the overall activity over the past 30 days. So that's obviously, that's a rolling frame of reference. So as the past week has moved on into that frame of reference, a little bit quieter time period brought down some of that vol. One-year vol going back all the way a year. One-year realized vol still added pretty much exactly 90%. So it's unched from last week, which shows that Bitcoin still historically over the past year, a very volatile asset. Not many assets you can look to and say, hey, you know, what's their one-year realized volatility? Uh, it's not going to be 90%. You go to the S&P, it's certainly not going to be 90%. Sometimes not in the one year, but in the 30 day or so, it'll dip down to 5 or 6% out there. So Bitcoin, very different beast from a volatility perspective. Let's go out to the implied volatility now. The implied, of course, listeners, is the level of volatility the market's options prices are actually implying. So if you have a price of a Bitcoin option out there, that is going to imply a certain level of volatility baked into that price. And right now, that 30-day implied, also down. It was about 76% on our last show. Coming in today's show, is about 69%. So not a big move coming in a little bit, but still fairly frothy, still fairly volatile out there, about a 70%. That's a pretty volatile asset out there. So again, we have big events coming up in the next couple of weeks. The having maybe analogous to what you're seeing out there in an earnings call from an equity where the vol is probably going to build going into that event. So it might be interesting to watch uh, going into this as we get into these final couple of weeks. What happens from a vol perspective? I haven't really seen a good breakdown. Maybe we'll have to crunch those numbers ourselves of what's happened from a vol perspective on the past few havings. Of course, this is a very different beast now than the last time because there actually is a thriving options market and indeed a futures market, whereas last time it was very much mostly OTC. So a little bit of a different beast out there, which we kind of be inter- interesting to see from an overall vol perspective. So let's break down the volume. Let's crunch the numbers. What's been trading since the last time we gathered here together? Let's go out to Darabit, still the leading options platform out there from a Bitcoin perspective. Pretty steady volume overall since our last show. Uh, the big days out there were the 23rd and the 24th. They did 67 and 69 million worth of notional, respectively. Uh, to or excuse me, the 26th was about $47 million, the next highest, most active day. And today, decent day. So far, coming to showtime, about $26 million on the tape out there. The big day still going back to the 15th out there. That seems to be the big day, 15th and 16th. Of the, the big days of the past uh, month or so out there. Going on out to what has been trading, what made up that, you know, $67, 69000000 million worth of notional going up day on, day out over there. The big prints we saw out there in Darabit this past week looks like a few 300 lots topping the tape out here. First off, looks like we have a vertical. The May 5,000, 6,000 put spread went up 300 times on the 23rd back when Bitcoin was 75.89. Uh, those uh, 6,000 puts went up for 0.03 effectively Bitcoin, and the 5,000 puts obviously worth less farther out of the money. Those are about 0.0157 out there. I'll let you do the math. But if you're wondering, it's 112% vol on those 5,000 puts out there. And also around the same time, not exactly related, but exact same size, same day, a few minutes before. And things that I take a while to go up in the Bitcoin options world. So I'm going to assume this is a related trade here. We're going to see the May 10,000 calls 
also going up. Again, 300 times. Bitcoin was 75.87, so a couple of points away from where the other puts traded. And that, they went up for a .019 on the call side. So it looks like it could be a put spread financed by calls, which would maybe make some sense given this environment, or it could be the other way around. It could be we don't have sides for these trades. It could be the old bullish risk reversal where they're selling the put spread, but they're buying. Again, they're not just selling the puts. They're selling a put spread to hedge themselves on the downside in case it blows below 5,000 and using that to finance some or all of a 10,000 call spec to the upside. Maybe they're buying what this having is selling. Maybe they think we're going to be rallying up to 10,000 again and doing it by May, in which case you got to get moving. <laughs> those 10,000 calls, the clock is ticking on those. But that was the biggest print we saw out there this week. In terms of what's trading today, it looks like the big trades are 254. Actually, this is interesting. The biggest trade today is actually not Deribit. Deribit got trumped today. It was by OK, uh, OK Exchange. The biggest uh, trade out there today are the 62 half puts going up 254 times on the OK Exchange, OKEX. So interesting. The first time we've seen that, we've been breaking down the show here, that uh, the daily volume, that's not overall, but the daily volume on the OK Exchange, trumping what's going on in Deribit. Maybe, who knows, maybe a sign of things to come, followed by the June 9,000 calls on Deribit, doing about 130 contracts out there today. So interesting stuff out there. Let's look at the SKU. Again, this is your typical 50 delta SKU, 25 delta put, 25 delta call. If you don't know what that means, that sounds like Greek to you, listeners, I encourage you. Check out some of our more basic introductory to options programs like Options Bootcamp, Options Playbook Radio, break down what SKU is, or delta, all that good stuff. Uh, coming into today's show, seeing that 50 delta SKU, at about a 9.7%, that's down from 11%. So remember, if it's positive, that means the puts are in charge. It's a little bit counterintuitive what you see out there in an equity index out there, something along those lines. But still, the puts not quite as firmly in charge as they were last week. Last week was 11%. This week, 9.7%. It makes sense. We've been rallying for the lion's share of that time. So as a result, seeing puts a little bit less in charge out here. Going on out to the put to call. That one is up slightly, uh, up from 62%, 64%, so effectively unched on the week, but up ever so slightly out there. If you're wondering, the average, actually, we're at about, from an open interest perspective, the put to call average is about 58%. So we're actually at the highest it's been. The max is 64%, which is pretty much where we are right now, which is kind of interesting and perhaps worthy of note on there. Speaking of the open interest, let's see how that's been evolving since our last show. It's come off a little bit on most of the platforms. Uh, Deribit is pretty much exactly at their average. Their average is 499 million. That's exactly where they are right now. They, they've maxed out, out around 650 million. The dark side, the downside, 353 million out there. We're at about 499 right now. So pretty much right in line. Uh, we're off the highs you saw from a few weeks ago, but still pretty hefty. Half a billion or so open out there on Deribit. Number two out here, actually, again, it's a, it's a fight between OKEX and LedgerX. Uh, OKEX at 38 million, just barely taking the number two spot ahead of LedgerX with 37 million. And then we've got, bringing up the rear CME, 6.8 million. Again, their highest was about 12 million they had last show, so we're off from that. Even though they're doing some paper today, we'll get to that in a minute. And then uh, we've got back, bring up the rear, with a whopping 62,000 worth of open interest. If you're wondering where that open interest is aggregated across the months, it's still June, 34,100 contracts aggregated across. This is across all the platforms, so your Deribits, your OKEXs, everything else. June, still where the action is. It seems like the crypto options love to aggregate around the quarterly, so March was big. When March rolled off the board, they went to June. Makes sense. Pretty much there's a tie for number two there between May with about 12,000 and September with about 11,500. I would assume once June rolls off the board, September will take its place. That's just where the action and the open interest likes to live out there. Well, let's talk about CME over there now. CME, Bitcoin options. The big day recently was, again, the 15th out there for them. They put up nearly $2 million worth of notional. Today was closing in on that today. As of coming into showtime, we saw about one2 Million worth of notional changing hands. That's the biggest day since the 15th of April. So, and that's pretty much a 2x or not, if not more than what we've seen pretty much every other day since our last show. So, some paper trading out there on CME land today. Not so much on the futures side, though. Coming into today's show, about 3,000 of the futures going up on CME land. Friday, 4,200. The big day last week was Thursday. 
13,300, and Monday was about 4,700. So pretty light overall on the futures side, Thursday notwithstanding as well. It's kind of been a trend we've seen for a while now. Futures volume light, options volume, though, maybe ticking up, maybe a, a sign that the worm is turning. Maybe as we approach this halving, maybe we'll see more folks flocking in to the CME Bitcoin options. Head on out to Backed. Let's see what our old friend, the Backed Volume Bot, has to say doing their breakdown for the monthly futures. Total of 957 contracts. That translates to about 700, excuse me, 7.25 million worth of notional. That's down 43% over the course of this past, uh, since our last show here. All-time high for the number of traded contracts, if you're curious, by the way. That goes back to December 18th of 2019, 6,601. So not quite there. Remember, that contract is one-to-one. So one contract, one coin out there. The open interest is about $7.5 million. That puts it up about 3%. So a little bit of growth on the OI. Overall volume today, pretty light. Seems to be in line with what we're seeing, except for the fact that CME spiking a little bit out of nowhere out there. All right, let's keep on rolling. We want to make sure we want to hit all the stuff you guys have in your back pocket, including what's going on out there in the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the The altcoin Altcoin universe. universe. All right, everybody, welcome to the altcoin universe, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is going on out there in the rest of the universe out there, except Bitcoin, except when we're talking about the market cap, as we're going to do right now, because Bitcoin is still at the top of that leaderboard at about $141 billion. Again, we're going to take these overall market cap numbers with a bit of a tasty grain of salt, maybe some tasty kosher salt out there, because it is delicious. Uh, number two, we've got ETH, $21.5 billion. Number three, XRP, $8.6 billion. Number four, Tether. $6.4 billion. Number five, Bitcoin Cash, $4.4 billion. Number six, Bitcoin SB, $3.5 billion. Number seven, Litecoin, way down there, number seven, $2.8 billion. Number eight, Binance Coin, let's see, about $2.5 billion. Number nine, EOS, $2.5 billion as well, so just slightly under that one. And bring up the rear, once again, Tezos, $1.8, nearly $1.9 billion. I don't see any major changes here in our top 10 for the altcoin for this week, let's break in some of the price action up here. ETH having a good week, uh, feeling the love. Bitcoin tied, perhaps lifting all boats out there. Up 17, about 17 and a third handles from last show. Coming into showtime was at about 9, 192, almost and a half out there. It was trading about 175 and change last show. Let's break down a little bit of what's going on in the number two overall crypto options market. Of course, talking about ETH, let's break down again all these metrics. Check them out for yourselves. Skew.com, the place to go. 30-day realized, that's down. Kind of seeing a similar trend to what we saw out there in Bitcoin options. That's down to about 106% from 122 last week. So it's down a fair amount. Again, less volume in ETH options as well. So you might see a little bit more movement in these as a result. 30-day implied, that's down from 95% to 91%. A few weeks ago, it was 109%. So that implied has come in a little bit over the last couple of weeks as well. ADB still down around $2 million or so worth of notional. It was higher. I think it got up around 5 not too long ago, but it's come off quite a bit. Still a pretty decent volume week, so we'll probably expect to see that ADB perhaps uh, trending a little bit north again. Uh, d- let's see. The 20th, we saw $3.3 million. Uh, The 24th, we saw $3.5 million. On the 26th, we saw $3.6 million, and coming into today, about $2.7 million worth of notional on the board out there. Let's see, in terms of overall, yeah, that's pretty much the average out there right now. Yeah, about $2.1 million. Uh, Last time we did it, it was about $2.7 million. So the ADV has come in a little bit, but, uh, you know, given the fact that we're seeing most of those numbers this week over the $3 million level, I expect that's going to be ticking up again as of our next show here. The skew out there pretty much unched right around 7.9 or so percent out there getting on out to the open interest about 40 million net open out there in eth options that's a little bit north of the average which is about 36 million right now it's not quite the highest we've seen which is about 51 million that was a few weeks back at the height of the madness Uh, but uh, still a pretty hefty clip open out there in eth options 40 million maybe a sign that eth growing a little bit in interest out there from an overall options perspective you know what else is growing Ever so slightly, but it managed to tick up. 
That's, of course, our old friend Ripple up almost a cent from last show, 0. 0.00992, to be precise. <laughs> so coming into showtime, we saw our old friend XRP at about 19 and a half cents. So again, a little bit removed from the dark days when it was threatening a dime to the downside there. Maybe threatening a 20 handle up there in the near future. We'll keep an eye on that. I know that would make a lot of our XRP fans out there happy campers. Bitcoin Cash up about 14, almost 14 and a half handles from last show. And the old Bitcoin SV up about six and a quarter or so from last show. Now, speaking of last show, you guys have been asking us a lot of questions. Let's see if we can squeeze some of you in. A little bit of your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right. Welcome to the Crypto Questions, a portion of the show where we answer your questions about crypto. Pretty self-explanatory. You know, we like to rotate this show. We bring on a guest and do a deep dive into some aspect of the crypto space. And every other week, we like to do a nice kind of quick hit show, get you in, get you out, get you on your way. Whatever show we're doing, whatever format we're doing, I like to make sure we get you guys on the show because you always have questions. Keep them coming. You know how to find us at options on most of the major social media platforms is a good starting point. Or, of course, you can write back to us and via our mobile app or via the website, questions at theoptionsinsider.com. That also works. Carrier Pigeon, we'll accept them. Don't leave them where you're leaving the podcast reviews, though, because that's typically not a place we check all the time. So your question might get a little bit delayed there if you want to hit us up those other ways. And, of course, listening live, uh, you get bumped to the top of the line. Just like Jack here. Jack saying, great show. Thanks for this. Well, thank you, Jack, for listening. We love all you guys and gals out there who tune in every week. We've been seeing you guys coming in. We see the numbers. We see people discovering this show all the time. It is, like we've said many times, it's kind of the only game in town for talking the crypto derivatives side of the fence. So we're glad you guys are enjoying it. Hopefully, if you like this show, you're moving on. If you're newcomers, you're discovering the full network. We do a lot of other stuff here outside of crypto, but it is fun to dip our toes into the crypto waters every now and then. I just wish we had more volume on some of these major platforms to parse for you guys. I would certainly make it more, more interesting and easier for you guys to access out there as well. But this, this marketplace is growing up. It's evolving. We're seeing new players enter. We're seeing the existing platforms consolidate and evolve, get a little bit more user-friendly. As this marketplace grows and evolves, there'll be a lot more for us to talk about with you. All right, next up, we've got Albi, Albi34. He says, what do you think of Bitcoin as an uncorrelated asset class for long stock portfolios? Worth a look? If so, would you use the options or the spot? I think you know how the last part would go. It's in the name, Options Insider, after all. So we tend to lean toward the options. We don't sling a lot of underlying here. But if you're a little bit nervous about the options, the spot might be an easier way for a lot of you to go out there. But in terms of the first part of your question, the meat of your question, you know, we've been talking to a lot of our guests over the past month and change. And what's the one term many of them have been slinging about of late? This, the quote-unquote great disappointment that was the performance of Bitcoin during the big meltdown in March as the markets were really selling off and everything was hitting the fan. We were hitting circuit breakers day in, day in, day in. It was just a repeated massacre to the downside. And those are the moments where if you have a supposedly uncorrelated asset class, that's where you need it to kick in and do its thing. And that, unfortunately, is where Bitcoin did not do its thing. That's where it proved that, as some of our other guests have mentioned, you know, the same folks who are owning the long equities are loan- owning these Bitcoin deposits and other things. And so when they have to go to cash, they have to go to cash across all their assets, not just long equity. So they're scrambling to get liquid. They're going to dump Bitcoin along with everything else. We saw gold selling off. That's why I've said many times, when it all hits the fan, correlation tends to go to one. That's why if you want, you know, it's not just in the name that we like options. If you want true inverse correlations, really only two asset classes or two products you can really rely on. One is something in the volatility space because that tends to be inversely correlated. And when it hits the fan, getting more inversely correlated. So that's when it outperforms. So that's when you need it to outperform, and it does. And then, of course, a more straight-up directional hedge, like a put on whatever asset you're buying it on, because a put, you're paying a decent amount of premium for that, but it's going to guarantee you certain things, like directional performance. You know, if the underlying goes down, your put goes up. It's a thing you can rely on. It's built into the contract. So those are the two really ways you can rely on in this market for hedging as you put a long stock portfolio. Everything else, when you need it, 
Al will be 34 and everyone else, everyone else, everything else, I should say, probably not going to be there. It's going to be going down along with everything else out there. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of it right now as a quote-unquote uncorrelated asset class because it's not. We've seen it. It's in the moments when you need it, it is highly correlated, and that's pretty much the opposite of what you need for that. And got another comment coming here from M09. M09 says, hope all those Bitcoin bulls didn't swap their coin for crude. Damn, what a meltdown. Yeah, we were talking about this on our last show about people. That was come, This was right about, right before, I believe, maybe right as crude was about to go negative as of our last show. So folks were looking at those prices for front month crude before it went negative of like, you know, 20 cents, 30 cents and saying, my God, you can sell one Bitcoin and buy hundreds of barrels of crude if you wanted. And so that was intriguing to a lot of people. I, I'm with you, M09. Hopefully they didn't because they, to their dismay, and much of the market learned last week that the theoretical scenario that all of us had heard about probably tangentially, but it was always, again, in that theoretical basis, that notion that crude and these other physical commodities can go negative if the right set of circumstances avails themselves. And that's exactly what happened last week. We have demand annihilated for crude as a result of a global pandemic. We have the idiocy of the Saudis and the Russians fighting a price war all the way down to effectively the negative strike. Uh, all of that throwing fuel on the fire to drive it actually down to about minus $40 a barrel. So if you came in and swapped your Bitcoin for that front month contract at about 20 cents or whatever it was at the time, you lost $40. So uh, that, hopefully you're right, M09. Hopefully all those Bitcoin bulls just stayed where they were because Bitcoin's had a good week. Crude, not so much, especially that front month contract. That went out pretty nasty. When we're listing, we're seeing CME listing negative strikes. That's just a, a different ball game entirely, and you don't want to be playing there if you don't have to. All right, let's see here. Got some more coming in. Tyler. Tyler wants to know, how about using stock substrats in Bitcoin? Is that a viable option? In quotes. <laughs> he puts, see what I did there? Yeah, I see what you did there. I'll always point out a good pun there, Tyler. He also wants to know, can you update us on HXRO? Well, maybe let's do that one first. HXRO listeners was, of course, the gaming utility token. Those guys came on the show a few months back. If you're new to the program, go through our archives wherever you're listening to this. Find the episode that they were on. I think you'll like it. These utility tokens, somewhat interesting because, you know, they're not your your usual trading asset. They have an actual utility. They have an actual end use that people want to use that token for. And so in this case, it's to get access to their daily fantasy crypto trading game, effectively. It seems like it's doing pretty well as of showtime Uh, That coin is up quite a bit. It hit its nadir. They were on back uh, last year, and it hit its nadir after then, right around November of last year, where it got down uh, to pretty low. It looks like it was down, threatening, you know, about a cent or so, maybe two. And coming into today's show, it's north of the nine cent level. It's about nine cents, still looking up from its low levels there uh, back in the dark days of November of last year. So well up from there, about nine cents. And it makes sense. People are stuck home. They want to trade. They want to game. This kind of combines the two. So you're seeing a little bit more demand for that token lately as a result. So it seems like things are going well out there. If you're curious, they are number 335 in overall coin market cap out there. Uh, But the first part of your question, he wants to know, how about using stock substitution strategies in Bitcoin? Really quickly, listeners, if you don't know who that is, check out our options bootcamp, options playbook radio shows. Uh, Brian in that options playbook radio loves a version of this called the fig leaf. He'll tell you all about it if you check out that show. Very quickly, it's you're going out a little bit farther in time to buy a more meaty in-the-money call option, typically around a 75 delta or so, maybe more, maybe a little less, depending on how you like to set it up, usually at least six months. And what that's doing is that's allowing you to get most of your exposure to the underlying movement of that asset without having to pay to actually buy the full asset. So it's an attractive way to do it. You can play with it. You can sell calls against it, hence the fig leaf. A lot of different things you can do with it. Uh, Am I a fan of that out here in Bitcoin? Not really. For some of the reasons we said earlier on about why we weren't fans of it over the last couple of weeks out there in the broad equity market as well. Uh, Spreads out there were wide. Vol was high. And so as a result, you were paying through the nose. You're paying an exorbitant amount of vol, and you were paying ridiculously wide spreads for this, uh, this stock substitution strategy, which makes it a lot less attractive. If you, want to, you have to pay 
absurd volatility premium to get into it. It's not really that worth doing. A similar analysis can be had out here. Obviously, the balls come in a little bit in Bitcoin, but the spreads on the front month are not that tight. <laughs> so if you want to go out six months or let alone a year or two, it's going to be very wide. You're going to be paying a lot in slippage out there to get this strategy done. So this strategy is very much dependent on liquidity as well. You can do it in a big S&P. You can do it in an Apple, some of the more liquid options names out there because there's liquidity going out six months or a year, at least enough to make things happen. Last couple of weeks, not so much even in those names. And something like Bitcoin, where they're still kind of struggling to find its footing, it's going to be hard to find decent liquidity that far out. So I'm not as much of a fan of doing that type of strategy in general, I like the strategy. It's a, it's a worthwhile approach, but it depends, again, on the liquidity, the volatility, and the underlying. And right now, it's not really that favorable for this particular strategy out there in Bitcoin. But good question, Tyler. Glad to see you're learning. Maybe we'll, we'll wrap it up with these last couple here. Chinook chiming in, saying he heard about it on the great podcast. <laughs> the great podcast. Uh, the Crypto Rundown by, by us, of course. Uh, that there were many $1,200 deposits into crypto accounts. Coincidence? I think not. Well, thanks for that love, Chinook. We think it's a great podcast, too. We're glad you like it. Uh, and you're right. We're talking about an article. I think it was from or I think it was Coinbase's CEO went out and crunched the numbers and found that their deposits and that exact amount had spiked over the course of the past, uh, past few weeks out there. So that's an interesting nugget. You're right. We did talk about that. Glad you're loving it, Chinook, and everyone else out there. And we'll wrap it up with this kind of cryptic tweet. From the folks, I guess, at Genesis Volatility, they want us to know that uh, the DeFi option volume growth on this open protocol for a decentralized ETH options are an epic step into the future. They're saying these ETH options are, as they put it, fresh into existence. <laughs> I guess that's their code for opening. And they sent along a great chart here of uh, some ETH put volume. Uh, out here uh, going back over the last couple of weeks, shooting some pretty decent size. That's kind of analogous to what we were talking about earlier there, Genesis Genesis, and everybody else out there on Darien. We have seen decent volume out there in the ETH options. I haven't checked out this exact platform that you're talking about, but I'll have to, I'll have to give it a look and see how it's faring out there. And perhaps it's something worthy of analysis for a future episode of the Crypto Rundown. All right. That music, unfortunately, means we've come to the end. Your questions always take us in such fun directions. Keep them coming. We do love to hear from you guys. And, of course, if you like what you're hearing, make sure you subscribe to the full network. We're going to keep these shows coming to you every Monday, doing the quick hits, sometimes a little bit longer if your questions run long, and, of course, the lengthier interview episodes as well. So stay tuned for that. Stay safe out there. Stay small. Stay nimble when it comes to your trading. Check out the rest of the content we have throughout the rest of the week. Just did the option block. We'll have advisors option hitting the network tomorrow. You can listen to it live, of course. We have OPR hitting it on Wednesday, Thursday. We've got TWIFO and option block again, Friday, Ball Views. A lot of good stuff for you guys to check out out there. Options boot camp, new episodes hitting the network as we speak. So you guys who are newer to the option space, I know a lot of listeners to this program are. It's a great show for you guys to check out. Go back to the early archives, episode one, and listen all the way through you'll feel a lot more informed about options after doing that. And we'll see you back here next week for more of the Crypto Rundown. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.